Hello, we're going to talk about the anatomy on the lateral chest radiograph, which is often a little challenging for both medical students and residents. So let's start with the easy stuff. So this is the retrosternal space that should only contain fat. Sometimes you see soft tissue in there in kids, which is a thymus, or in patients who've had their sternum cracked because they've had bypass surgery or something like that. You can see some hazy soft tissue as well. Looking at the hemidiaphragms, the right hemidiaphragm is going to be the one that comes the most anterior and goes the furthest back. See my separate movie about that. The left hemidiaphragm may have the stomach bubble under it. it tends to be lower but not always and will fade out at the level of the heart. It also starts the most anteriorly here. I don't need to tell you that this is going to be the spine back here. Don't forget the spine should get more lucent as you go lower down. It should not get more opaque until you hit the first hemidiaphragm. If it becomes more opaque before that, that's going to be a spine sign. Now you may or may not see the fissures in a patient, but you will have the major fissure on both sides. And the left one tends to be a little bit steeper than the right one. You tend to see them if they're a bit thickened or there's a fluid on or you look really closely on a good quality study. And then the uh, minor or the horizontal fissure on the uh, right side is going to be sitting like this. Now I'm just going to show you an example where you could see these a bit better. This patient's in pulmonary edema and has been kind enough to show us at least some of their major fissures bilaterally as well as their minor fissure. So this one is going to be the left one, this one will be the right one, and this is the horizontal or the minor fissure. Let's come back to our lateral chest radiograph here and look at some of the major mediastinal components. I'm going to start at the front of the heart and work my way backwards. So the anterior aspect of the heart has the right ventricle. And the heart really has sort of three major bumps as we move up over it. We start with the right ventricle, which is up against the sternum. That should not fill more than about one third of the retrosternal space if you take a point from the apex of the left ventricle to the manubrosternal angle. If more than that, it's enlarged. When we move up further cranially, the next bump, if you like, is the pulmonary outflow tract, and the third bump is the ascending aorta. So right ventricle, the pulmonary outflow tract, and the ascending aorta. Sweeping round, we have the aortic arch, followed by the descending aorta. Whether you see the entire aorta or not is going to depend on how large it is, and how ectatic it is, and whether it's positioned very posteriorly against the vertebral bodies or not, as it is in a younger person, or it tends to wave more anteriorly in older people and you see it better. Let's look at the posterior aspect of the heart. This up here is the left atrium. Note where it is, it's the most posterior and the most cranial of the four chambers. The left ventricle is this area here. So left ventricle and left atrium. So let's see what we have left. Well, let's look at the pulmonary arteries. So the left pulmonary artery forms what I think of as a mini aortic arch under the aortic arch. So find your aortic arch here. So here's your aortic arch. Look under it and you'll see there is a structure which forms another little baby aortic arch. And so that is the left pulmonary artery. Think about it. The aorta is on the left and the left pulmonary artery is on the left. So look under the aorta, you'll find the left pulmonary artery. If you go anterior and inferiorly from the left pulmonary artery, in some patients you see this better than others, you'll see an oval opacity that is the right pulmonary artery. If you remember the right hilum is always lower than the left in normal patients, you'll know where you're going to look. Let's just come down to the bottom of the heart here and you'll see that there is a little curvy linear opacity which is right at the bottom of the heart here and it leads down towards the abdomen. That's the inferior vena cava and you're always going to see that. A nice little marker for left ventricular enlargement 
is that the left ventricle usually doesn't come more than ooh, about two to three centimeters posterior to the inferior vena cava, but as it gets bigger, it starts to enlarge backwards and downwards like that. Conversely, the left atrium is going to be enlarging back here. All right, so we've done the opacities. Now let's look at the lucences. So we have our trachea, it's going to be loosened because it fills it with air. It's going to come down here. You'll always see this round lucency here. That's the left main bronchus and the left upper lobe bronchus usually leads off it here. And the right upper lobe bronchus will sometimes see between the left pulmonary artery and the aortic arch up here. Most patients, the esophagus does not contain gas. However, if it's dilated for some reason and full of gas, we know it's going to be posterior to the trachea, so it's going to be in there. This lucency here is not a real one. It's just the air that's between the aorta and anterior, anterior to the aorta or air that's posterior to the IVC, and it's a bit of a fake out. So I think that I've only left out one important structure here. A lot of people get confused about what these pairs of vertical lines are. Let me rub it out so that you can see them there. I've just zoomed up a little bit here, and it's just this line and this line. Well, those are the scapulae, and we're just seeing the ed edges of the blades of the scapulae, and depending on how the patient's arms were positioned, they could be um, projected in different places. I just want to show you that cardiac and vascular anatomy alongside a maximum intensity projection of an aortic angiogram. So this is done by CT, and we've stripped away everything apart from the contrast. Um, so only seeing the, vas the vascular anatomy and the insides of the ventricles. So just to go over it very quickly again. So this is the right ventricle. This is the right ventricle. Here's the pulmonary outflow tract. Here's that pulmonary outflow tract. You can see it's going in here to the main pulmonary artery. Here's the ascending aorta, and here is the ascending aorta. Aortic arch, here's that aortic arch. Here's the left main pulmonary artery, and here we can see the left main pulmonary artery coming across. The right one we're not going to see because that's on the other side of the patient's heart. Here is the left atrium. This is the left atrium, here is the left ventricle, and here is the left ventricle. And then obviously we have the aorta coming all the way down here. And then finally, this is for a slice from a sagittal contrast enhanced CT um, study. And remember that the sagittal scans are one slice where the CT is a superimposition of structures. So we don't see them all, but again, this is the right ventricle. And this is the right ventricle. This is the left ventricle. And this is the left ventricle here. And we can see, we know that because we can see the blood coming out the aorta here through the center of the heart. This is the left atrium. And so that will be the left atrium up there. And then finally, we have the aorta coming across here. And we have the main pulmonary artery leading to the left pulmonary artery right there, and then this little lucency in here is the same as we saw here, and that's the left main bronchus. I hope you've enjoyed this whistle-stop tour through the anatomy on the lateral chest x-ray.